looks like the year of the currency, really. I mean, in terms of the volatility of uh, what we saw at the start of the year, especially yeah. with SNB, and now the ruble dropping 1.7% against the U.S. dollar. Correct. It's the biggest slide in two weeks for the ruble. Is volatility back for the ruble? Yes, definitely. Uh, ruble was not performing very well in 2014, as we have said, due to the geopolitical issues um, and the conflict between the Ukraine and Russia, followed by the uh, U.S.-led sanctions. And the ruble dropped 43% in 2014, so we're expecting the ruble to go further down in 2015 as well. And we can see in the first week of January the ruble has come down. Yeah, and, and how much further does it have to go? Well, it's difficult to predict, but I will say that it will go down further 5 to 10 pips, you know. Um, in, in ruble as well, yeah. And central bank, despite central bank action? Yes, despite central bank action. Okay. Well, let's talk about uh, the currencies here in Asia because, you know, as part of the ruble story, of yeah. course, is the falling price of oil. We've seen that for the ringgit in Malaysia. Yeah. It's a big exposure to, of course, falling Correct. oil prices. Um, what about uh, that? What kind of pressure can we expect to see on the ringgit for 2015? Well, risk is the theme for 2015, I would rather say. And uh, at the back of what happened with SNB, there was unexpected volatility in the market, yeah. which has actually put a market to an edge. Mm. And there's a lot of turbulence around which uh, the traders are facing at the moment in terms of trading in the currency, especially. Uh, I think the main reason behind might be the, the oil prices has, has given a shock to all the, the global investors in the global financial market. Um, and uh, followed by the oil, I will say that there's, uh, uh, beyond the gyration of this, um, oil, there's, there's an issue going on at the moment in the China at the same time where China yeah. is not performing. China is at a growth momentum stage and China construction sector is not performing very well. That's the reason the GDP has fallen down from 7.5% in 2013. Yeah. We expect it to be go down to 7.2%, you know. Yeah. And I think uh, Canadian dollar and Mexican peso is not performing very well at the same time because of the oil prices has gone down and dollar has strengthened a lot. You guys buzzing about FXCM and the exposure it had to yes, the Swiss. <laughs> what are you thinking? Probably shaking your well, head. Well, I, I believe that, look, FX market is, is very risky, is very volatile. You know, right. Anything can happen. It's a part and parcel of the business, you know. Uh, sometimes we are one side of the business, sometimes we are on the other side of the business. So it can happen. But the thing is, um, yes, I mean, it is a very lucrative market, but we have, to, we have to take our own measures and a step, and we have to have a very strong risk mitigation yeah. strategy so that we know what we are doing and we should not suffer from these sort of incidents that happen, you know. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of things going on around in the Eurozone at the same time. The ECB is trying to introduce quantitative easing programs, mm -hmm. you know, and so that the Euro is not performing very well. What's, well. what's your favorite uh, Euro play right now? Um, I will say it's EURUSD. Of course, everybody's also a favorite uh, play as well is uh, long U.S. dollar. Long U.S. dollar. I mean, but is this getting to be an overcrowded position? Yes, it is going to be a overcrowded position, definitely. Yeah, because what's going on, as as I as I mentioned before, um, ECB is just trying to, to come up with a strategy. You know, there's there's election going on in the Greece as well at the same time. So, I think the quantitative easing program um, might affect the whole eurozone. You know which has, in fact, affected the Eurozone, but to what extent is, is very unpredictable at this stage.